I'm James Wrigley, Director of White Mountain Lodging Operations for the Appalachian Mountain Club. In this video, I'm going to go over some hiking tips to help the visitors of the White Mountain National Forest enjoy the amazing outdoor experiences this location has to offer, while also staying safe and preserving this important resource. My first tip for first-time visitors is, and less experienced hikers is to start small and work your way up to more challenging hikes. Trying a 4,000-footer or multi-day backpacking trip on your first go might be a stretch. Although the elevation of the mountains here in New Hampshire may not seem high compared to the mountains in the western United States, the trails leading to each summit are often very steep and rocky. There are few switchbacks on the trails here, which poses physical and technical challenges, both climbing up to a peak and going down the rocky terrain at the end of the day when your legs are already tired. Many people who are used to hiking in lower elevation areas with trails that are less steep often overestimate the distances they'll be able to hike in the White Mountains. Again, because of the difficulty of the train here, hiking six miles in the White Mountains is much more physically challenging than six miles in, say, the Blue Hills Reservation near Boston. I recommend that you start off with a shorter hike, two to three miles that has an elevation gain of a thousand feet or less. This is a good way to test your physical fitness and build your hiking confidence and experience. There are lots of lower elevation hikes that provide great views of the surrounding landscape and other natural features like waterfalls or lakes. You don't need to sacrifice scenic value by going on a shorter hike. Although you may have heard about iconic locations like Mount Washington, Franconia Ridge, or others, these are incredibly strenuous hikes that require a level of physical fitness, outdoor experience, and planning that you may not have on your first hike out. Hiking to the summit of Mount Washington is the equivalent of walking up 400 flights of stairs or climbing the Empire State Building three times. It's great to have some goals like this to work towards during your hiking career, but don't start off with these on your first hike. The last thing you want to do is be unprepared and exhausted, miles from the trailhead, and potentially need to be rescued. If you aren't an experienced hiker and don't know where to start, AMC offers a variety of programs for families, teens, and individuals. This is a great option for someone who is interested in learning outdoor skills and exploring the White Mountains with a guided group. My second tip is to follow the hike safe code, which is first, be prepared with knowledge and gear before you start your hike. Learn about the terrain and conditions and local weather of where you'll be hiking in advance. There are several online resources that can help you with this, but I would recommend picking up a copy of the AMC's White Mountain Guide, which gives detailed trail descriptions and includes a set of topographical maps. You can also try calling our trails information desk at the Pinkham Notch Visitor Center at 603-466-2721, 603-466-2721 for trail information and weather updates in the White Mountains. Hike with the 10 essentials. Know the gear you're bringing and make sure it works beforehand. Don't substitute your phone for a compass or map. The batteries in your phone can die pretty quickly and then you'll be left without any way of getting out if you're left out after dark. Remember to bring extra layers and be prepared for a variety of weather conditions. Keep in mind that the weather you're experiencing when you start the hike at the trailhead may be likely warmer and milder than the weather you'll find at high elevation areas. So don't leave your jacket or extra layers in the car because you feel warm in the parking lot. If you're staying at AMC's Highland Center Crawford Notch, you can also use our gear library to borrow missing items you may need for your hike, such as trekking poles. Item number two on the hike safe responsibility code is leaving your hiking plan with someone else. Let a reliable family member or friend know where you plan to hike, what trails you plan to take, and what time they should expect you back. If you do not return by the time specified, let them know who you want them to contact. If you decide to change your plans, then you should contact them as well. Item number three, if you hike with a group, stay together for the entire hike. Plan your hike in advance with the whole group and make sure everyone understands your hiking plan and is comfortable with and prepared for the task. On the hike itself, hike at a place of the slowest hiker so it's easier for you to stay together. Be sure to stop at all trail intersections and wait for everyone to catch up. If one of your group members cannot complete the hike for whatever reason, head back to the trailhead. Number four, no one to turn back and cut your hike short. If you're experiencing bad weather, a trail feature you didn't expect, like a swollen river that you cannot cross, or someone in your group is too high, tired or injured to complete the hike, or you're running out of daylight, be ready to turn around. It's not worth endangering yourself or others in your group for the sake of reaching a summit. The mountains will be there another day. Most beginner hikers will be walking about one mile an hour. Based upon that speed, you can calculate how long the hike should take. For example, if you're going on a three mile hike, it should take you about three hours. Pay attention to your map and the landmarks you see on the trail and keep track of how far you've gone and how long it has taken. If you're hiking in a slower place than you planned and your progress is less than you expected, it's a good idea to set a turnaround time with a landmark. For example, if you started the hike in the morning, you should plan to turn around at 1 p.m. if you haven't reached the halfway mark of your planned route. 
Number five, consider purchasing a hike safeguard. If you get injured or lost in the backcountry and need to be rescued, having a hike safeguard will exempt you from paying the cost of your rescue if you are negligent. Your purchase also helps support the search and rescue fund for New Hampshire's Fish and Game Department. My final tip is to practice the leave no trace principles when you are out on the trail. While all seven leave no trace principles are important, in recent years we've had increasing problems with visitors not disposing of their waste properly. Please pack out any wrappers, food scraps, or other waste you accumulate during your hike. These materials pollute the local environment and can attract wildlife. When you're hiking in the White Mountains, there are a few opportunities to use a traditional bathroom or privy. Day hikers are welcome to use the bathrooms at the AMC's eight high mountain huts located along the Appalachian Trail, as well as the 14 staffed and unstaffed campsites that we maintain. But you also need to know how to properly dispose of your human waste in the woods. When you're hiking in remote areas and there aren't many people around, it can feel like it's not a big deal to toss an apple core into the woods or not cover your human waste, but about six million people visit the White Mountain National Forest every year. This moment of not properly disposing of your waste multiplied millions of times becomes a pretty big problem that is unsustainable. So please do your part in helping preserve the forest. Thanks for watching this video. If you're interested in learning more about how to enjoy the White Mountains safely and responsibly, visit our website at outdoors.org.